man. Lions, they had more rushing yards. They had more passing yards. They had more possession of the ball. They had more yards per pass. They had total yards, and they had an advantage in total yards all above. So how the hell did they lose this game? How? <sighs> this was not the one that was supposed to get away from them. They should be 2-0 as they sit right now. Mm. And it's so disappointing. It, <laughs> it only can fall on two people. It really can only fall on Jared Goff and Ben mm. Johnson. They were both absolutely horrible. Really, to me, throughout the whole game, Jared Goff starts the first drive with a pick to Jamison Williams. Um, mm. And then after that, like they were just running a lot of plays that didn't make sense. Goff threw the ball 55 times, and it was basically a one-score game the whole time. Mm. If you throw in that many times, that means you're trying to play catch-up from multiple scores down. Goff throw the ball 55 times when that is not his game, and when you have, to me, the best two-headed rushing attack in football, the best old line in football, the Bucs had just lost their best D tackle, and mm. you can't pound the ball inside or at least balance it out a little bit, I got to put it all on Goff and Ben Johnson. To me, I've been saying for a while, Ben Johnson is not what people think he is. He Ooh. is smart. He is very creative. Same with Jared Goff. He's good and he's functional under this offense with their resources. But I think they get a little too much credit for what they do. I understand through Ooh. the numbers they are very good, but they don't they don't please me enough for what we need in this team. Like you can't have them near 500 yards and put up 16 points, bro. It's no excuse for that. Yeah. So. Ooh. I'm mad again. I'm mad again. Ooh. Okay, so that's that's kind of crazy. I wasn't expecting the Ben Johnson call out here. <laughs> I'll say that right off the bat. I wasn't he expecting that. It. Jared Goff, I can, I can understand it. And I partially agree with you on the Ben Johnson. There was some questionable cause there of why I, in my head, I'm wondering, okay, well, why the hell are we going to Jamar Gibbs and Montgomery way more? Since we've seen, that's how the Lions literally handed it to the Rams at the end of the game. They just put belt to ass and just started going. I mean, it was it was bad. They literally played power football and won the game. So I was expecting the Lions to show a little bit more of that going into that Tampa Bay game. But right. it, it seemed like it was more of a duel to try and outpass the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So I kind of agree on the whole Ben Johnson thing. But um, since you brought up Jared Goff, like, did he get outplayed by Baker Mayfield? Sadly, no, he didn't. No. He was like, again, 34-55, 307 yards. Unfortunately, they didn't get in the end zone at all. And they mm. were one from seven in the red zone. That's where they really struggled the entire game was when they got into the red zone. They found ways to move the ball, and then they would stall out. Or Goff would make some bad throws, make some bad reads when he gets a little bit of pressure. He didn't get outplayed. The mantra in Detroit, as all Lions fans know, is <laughs> SOL. Same old Lions. That <laughs> applies when you find ways to lose, when you ain't got no damn business of losing. I know we hate yeah. that term out here, but this was absolutely an SOL type of moment for the Detroit Lions. You can't outgain your opponent that many yards. You can't push the ball as well as you did. You can't waste a masterclass performance by Aiden Hutchinson with oh. their five sacks, and you still lose the game by four points in your own building. If you would have lost it, it was, you know, they you know, got picked apart by the offense of the Bucs or you just couldn't stop them on the ground, I would get it. But they stopped them on the run. Baker didn't really get super loose with a lot of his throws. He kind of got a little lucky with some of them. And they just missed on a couple different plays on defense. I'm not even mad at the defense. Mm. I put it solely on the offense for not taking advantage of the resources they had, not playing the proper players in certain situations like David Montgomery who should have been used way more often Absolutely. it was just so many stupid mistakes that they had no business making especially with the kind of credit those guys get so yeah no nah, I it was very disappointing on the offense all around I so I, I mean I think the offense definitely had the D or let's we can agree on this the defense for sure kept the Lions in the game like 100%. Hutchinson, he's made a strong, strong case for defensive player of the year. Like that is dog. obvious for sure. For anybody who watched the game, for anybody who's been following the Lions at all, it was clear that Hutchinson, he came down hard on Baker Mayfield. Pause. That was crazy. But he like he he hey, he did his thing. He did his thing yes. in this game. And I have to say, bro, Jared Goff got outplayed. I, I think at the end of the day, Jared Goff got outplayed because 
watching the hell that Baker Mayfield had to go through and the adversity he had to go through against that Lions defensive pass rush was just insane. He didn't get nervous. He didn't buckle up. He didn't tighten up and start throwing crazy interceptions or throwing bad passes. He still stayed calm. He took a couple sacks like a man, pause, but he also stayed in the game and started dotting up and played good when he needed to. We seen him get out the pocket. He hit, he hit a couple people with some juke moves and stuff. I'm like, is this Baker Mayfield or or uh, I don't know. I'm like, who is this dude? <laughs> I'm like, who is this dude for the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers? So it was uh, to me. I thought Baker Mayfield played a clean game. He was very decisive, and ultimately, it does come down to Ben Johnson getting out coached. Uh, and I think the Lions sideline got out coached as a whole because even if you look at the play before half, that was a crazy transition yes. there because the Lions, yep. they had a, a clear advantage going into the half. It could have kicked the field goal and it would have put it would have helped them out. Got another three points on the board. And then now we're looking at a completely different situation at the end of the game. So I, I, I got to hear. I know that I know this had you a little frustrated on that. How should they have ended that half in terms of? trying to get close to get a field goal, but the 10-second runoff and all of that stuff. What's, what's your thoughts on that part? Super Bowl teams can't make that mistake. If you practice two-minute drills, if you are as disciplined as, as you preach you are, if you are ready for those expectations of being looked at and treated like one of the elite teams in the NFL, you can't make that mistake. I respect Dan Campbell for owning it and say, hey, that's on me. They got to play through it. I put them in a tough spot. Now we got to go play ball. And I, I respect that and I appreciate that. But, yeah, just those kind of mistakes can't be made, man. And I'll even agree with you and just say the terms of Jared Goff being outplayed because even if it's outside the numbers, sometimes you can win by just not making the stupid play that puts you in trouble. So, absolutely. Yeah, Baker didn't make a ton of, like, splash plays. Like, he just did a couple little nice things. He took care of the ball to the best of his abilities outside of one pick to Brian Branch. Outside of mm -hmm. that, he played, like you said, a clean game, made some good plays on offense, and showed that he could still be productive enough even without being a gunslinger throwing the ball 30, 50 times a game. Again, I I'll, I'll never understand – Throw it 55 <laughs> times with Jared Goff, who's a game manager. I've been saying it for years. That's fact. Stick to it. He's a fine player. He's serviceable for what they need, but he is still mm -hmm. a game manager at the end of the day, and they need to realize that. That's facts, bro. And, and I, I, again, like like you said, man, I mean, I thought they could have leaned on, on Gibbs and Montgomery just a little bit more. And then, bro, that is a it's a true luxury to have two backs that are that talented, that can yes. catch, that can run, that can block. Like, that is a true gift. And I, I know Lions, it's always it's been that talk all offseason about, oh, man, we need a, a one last receiver to really complete the offense. I mean, you can really throw Gibbs in, in that slot if you need to and use him kind of how we've seen the Saints use Alvin Kamara, kind of how yes. we've seen the uh, Chiefs use Tariq Hill and how the yes. Dolphins use Tariq Hill. You can kind of put that guy anywhere, and Jamar Gibbs is still going to go off. So, I mean, I would have loved to see that from the Lions. Uh, but, I mean, above all, it's, it's just weird. So, let's transition. Now. Let's transition.